Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Virtual Harp Summit Harpist. This is Diana Rowan and today I'm going to talk to you about the back. And for me, the back is what really powers our entire playing. And I was so excited to get so much great feedback from Virtual Harp Summit too. I have some of it highlighted here. Um, about changes people made, especially regarding the, uh, ooh, let me tap that. There we go. And especially regarding how people are sitting, and sitting for me is code for how they're using their backs. So uh, thank you for the like, hey Jillian. <laughs> and so I just highlighted out of these notes, we got pages and pages of feedback about changes that people made, especially regarding their backs. So, you know, that says to me, people are getting the message that the back is so critical to our playing. And so I wanted to go a little deeper into it today with some fun, fun exercises that we can do together. And um, there was one quote that I just loved from Bethany, and she said, how I sit is more centered. I pull my shoulder blades in and down. I'll talk about this today. I've seen a huge improvement and feel so much more confident. I mean, it doesn't really get better than that. So I am thrilled to help you guys out with some uh, observations about the back. Um, you know, I've noticed that a lot of harpists do complain about shoulder pain, and I feel like a lot of that shoulder pain is because they're not playing from their back. Now, with the back, um, what you want to do is you want to have this type of engagement so that your shoulders are actually not even part of the equation. If you're playing from your shoulders, for sure, that will tire you out and it will injure you. Your, your shoulders aren't really designed to be holding up for that long, but instead your back has this endless kind of energy. So we're gonna look at that today. Um, what else do I wanna say? You you know what, let's just, let's just dive straight in. Now, as Bethany mentioned, uh, the shoulder blades exercise is pretty much my favorite one. And I use this 24 hours a day playing the harp. And actually, you know, it's a really good posture to have anyway. And here's what we do. Imagine your shoulder blades. In fact, kind of feel them. You can even touch them. They're those little like wing bones kind of. And bring them in slightly together and then down. So here I'm gonna do it. Slightly in and slightly down. It's that subtle. So I'm not talking about going like this. This is actually not helping your back at all. That's just jamming your shoulders back. So instead, it's the shoulder blades <laughs> going in and down. And suddenly, your whole chest expands, your shoulders relax. You know, when you pull your shoulder blades in and down, you just can't be like this. Because oh, <laughs> it pulls them right down. It's so cool. Now, of course, you aren't actually moving your shoulder blades. It's muscles that are doing that. So I have, I have a picture for you. And this is the muscles of the back. This is one of my favorite harpy pictures ever. Look at that. Look at all that's going on for us here. So cool. And the muscles that we're actually using to engage our shoulder blades are called the rhomboids. Oh, guys, thank you for the hearts and everything. I love it. And feel free to ask any questions. I will try to catch them in the feed. Um, so the muscles in question are the rhomboids. And so those are kind of under here. They're kind of where the bra strap is. I know that doesn't help the guys. Um, or maybe it does. Uh, so where the bra strap is, it, you bring those muscles in, the rhomboids, and then it's the trapezius, which is this kind of triangular type muscle. That's what pulls down. So when I say you're moving your shoulder blades, of course you're really moving, moving your muscles, and that would be the rhomboids and the trapezius. But don't worry if you don't remember that. Just think shoulder blades in and down. You'll be great. Okay, so the shoulder blades are in and down, and suddenly your arms are so much freer. So um, let's do an experiment. I'd like you to be just kind of sloppy, sloppy posture. I'd like you to raise your arms as if you're gonna play the harp. Notice how your arms are feeling. And now notice how just the rest of your body is feeling. So now let's drop down. And we will do the super simple shoulder blades in and down. Now raise your arms as if you're gonna play. 
And what difference do you feel? Personally, I feel a whole lot more space to work with rather than slightly caved in here, but I also feel a lot more energy. I feel like, wow, my stamina will greatly increase. And from using this technique, I can play for hours and hours. You know, I do try to take a break every 45 minutes for about um, five minutes if I can, but I have been known to have to go through that and actually play for two hours straight. The only way I can do that is the shoulder blades in and down. So with this orientation of shoulder blades in and down, when I lift up my arms, I feel like they're like wings coming off of my back. I, I love to think of birds, you know, and how, you know, they're flapping their wings. Now, are they actually flapping their wings or are they recruiting their back? You got to know they're recruiting their back. So in that very same way, you know, we approach the harp. We're coming from this, this uh, wings orientation, should we say. So, so let's try that one more time. And so we're sitting here, shoulder blades in, slightly down, slightly, and then our wings come up. I love it. I love it. So um, what to do before we even play? Well, I think, you know, um, the, the warming up is pretty critical because our, our backs are often in an unideal situation almost all day long. Uh, oftentimes we're sitting at a desk, let's face it, or we're uh, working on a computer, which is, um, you know, kind of fatally flawed in many ways because you're constantly hovering in tension. Um, so warming up before you even get to your heart just takes a short amount of time, but man, it makes a huge difference um, in terms of you being able to get feedback from your body before it's too late. Oftentimes the feedback that we get back is uh, pain. We don't want it to get to that. So by warming up, you have a much greater chance of feeling super comfortable and not going toward pain. So you're sitting in your harp chair and all you have to do, very, very simple, I recommend is raise your arm and just bend over slightly. I'm not talking about pushing any kind of edge. This is simply about warming up and adding a little bit more blood flow. You know, and maybe, maybe you're gonna be this much. That's totally fine. This is not about powering through, no pain, no gain, no way. <laughs> A harp is never about that. Let me do this side too. I'm just, I'm warming up my spine by moving it a little bit. This is also a really great way to focus. So you're not um, still thinking about all your to-do list and so on. This is sort of setting the stage for you to be with your heart for real. Then I like to do a little bit of a twist. Very gentle. I'm not overdoing it in any way. I'm not trying to go to my maximum. Just a little bit. I can feel a little crunchiness. And then if your harp is, is close by, you can actually do a little bit of a chest opener on your harp. So I'm gonna put my hand up here. I'm just gonna turn slightly. I'm just trying to open my chest a little bit. I know this technically isn't the back, but it's allowing the back to be less responsible for this kind of business, which we never want actually, right? So just a bit of a chest opener. You can also do this against a door jam this side now so here's my arm up against the harp and and as you can see I'm not pushing very hard otherwise the harp would fall over this is just about opening a little bit <sighs> that feels really good I have to say um, now for some people they may find um, that they need to build up a little bit of strength so I really recommend this Dynaband thing, and I would choose the lowest possible tension. You can get these very tight, and you just put them, so I, I would recommend getting not tight. Um, you can put it, around, uh, put it around the leg of this chair, actually, and all you do is, is hold it gently and just pull it ever so slightly back. This actually is a great way to wake up muscles. You can see by putting out your elbow, if this feels comfortable, you know, how much are you gonna pull it up? Because sometimes we are playing with our arms up here 
Um, but again, you know, the key is to feel like you're actually engaging from the back and not pulling with your shoulders or with your hands. It's actually the back. So it's a very gentle movement. I'll mention this one again towards the end. Um, but this is a way to kind of wake things up a little. So um, then we get towards sitting. Now, for sitting, oh, thank you. I see some of you like that one. Um, regarding sitting, you know, our back is straight, ideally, right? And so we want to set ourselves up in a straight way with our harps. So I really recommend getting a, a square type chair like this. I don't like round chairs, even though they're cuter, um, because my tendency is to start twisting around. And as soon as I start twisting around, my spine has twisted as well. And I don't want that. I really want to have my feet on the floor, sitting on a straight edge chair. Now, I also line up my harp with the chair. So I try to get this angle and the back of the harp pretty much the same. I don't want it to be cocked this way. Show you a bit better here, yeah. See the way there's a very di big difference in the angles here? So that when I'm sitting, the harp comes back and it's really twisted. And I feel like, look at what is happening to my wrist, you know, unless I really raise my elbow extremely. Um, so my recommendation is have the harp be very similar angle to your chair. And if you find that you cock it a little bit to the left, that's, it's okay. But I don't want to see a huge amount. That's when we start seeing twisted bodies. And this is all about the back. So, here I am on my straight chair. I've set up my harp to be straight along with the chair. And guess what? The harp comes straight back to me. So, everything in straight lines. And then, I'm looking down the harp. And I've gotten used to not cocking my head. Because again, with the spine, you want it to be straight. If you're looking like that, I'll show you what it looks like without the harp. It looks like that. And how long can you keep that up? Not long. It feels really awful, actually. <laughs> you know? So think about that. As you're at the harp, you want to keep as straight a spine as possible. So here I am. And the harp comes straight back to me. And look. And I've, I've gotten used to seeing the strings that way. They look not too close together. People get concerned, oh, it's gonna to be too close, I can't see the strings. But to me, this is what the strings look like. They look that close together. If I'm used to this, yeah, sure, this suddenly looks like they're really close. But it's actually a quick, I would say it's a fairly quick uh, reorientation and it's very worth it. So, um, if you keep in mind this straight spine idea, I think that's highly motivating, you know, and you'll see the logic of, of gazing straight down. And a side benefit is your ear is much closer to the heart and you can actually hear it better. And I found that I was able to phrase so much better because I was really hearing the notes and I was letting them linger. Um, so musically, I felt much more connected to my harp by having this more straight and close stance to it. So, I wonder if anybody has any questions. No, just, just little likes and hearts, which is lovely, but you, you're welcome to ask me questions. I'm live right now. This actually is live. Um, so, let's see, what do I wanna say next to you? Um, yeah, let me just demo you a little bit of, of what the difference of engaged back versus non-engaged back looks like. So here I am, my back is engaged, and you can see, doing my little shoulder bump thing that I love, and my arms come up, they feel super light, my wings, right? <laughs> and... Now, 
Let me contrast that with a bad posture. So I'm going to bend. I mean, I just feel all the string here. I... I feel so constricted when I do this. I actually feel nervous. I feel like panicky, you know. So another aspect of opening up with the back is it does give you confidence as well. And for many of us as performers, you know, um, working with performance anxiety or performance energy is an issue. And we want to feel we want to feel great when we perform. And so already taking this position of confidence sets you up for confidence versus this. Can you see this? Or if I'm like, I feel really disconnected from my heart right now. So get back in position, <laughs> shoulder blades in, down. That's it, I'm ready. monitor yourself right how can you tell if you're with a, a uh, ideal back ideal harp back um, a few ways practicing in a full-length mirror will reveal this right away so I think it's really worth um, bringing your harp over to a full-length mirror if you happen to have one that's fabulous now if you don't don't worry you can actually use your phone so make a video and you can watch it and see where your back is at. Now, if you're not sure even how to recognize good posture in yourself, this is a good time to, uh, to go to a teacher, and a teacher especially who understands about technique. Um, I was, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say regarding technique, I would hesitate to go to a self-taught teacher simply because the harp does sound beautiful no matter what, and so oftentimes you don't need to um, look at excellent technique in order to sound pretty okay, but you end up paying in the long run. So um, maybe for artistry, you can absolutely go to a self-taught uh, harpist, but if you want a technique check-in, go to a teacher who is known for a healthy and powerful technique and just get your baseline going. So mirror, your phone, teacher, um, Let's see. Oh, hey, Madison. <laughs> uh, so true on the angle of the head. I found a great article on cell phone usage, right? Uh, that illustrates the same point. Yeah, thank you. And there's a link so people will be able to watch that later. Um, so what stretches would I recommend if you have tendonitis and it hurts after you play? Okay, so um, yeah, tendonitis is a big deal. Uh, so Helen, uh, Helen, I am assuming that you are under some kind of treatment for it. Uh, so regarding stretches for tendonitis, a lot of it is this, you know, constriction that you have in here. The energy is not allowed to flow out. So with some stretches, here's some very typical heart stretches and try them, but very, very gently. If you have even one ounce of pain, don't continue with the stretch because it's actually causing damage at that point. But in this one tends to be quite helpful in just opening up. I see some people do this. I don't so much like this. I feel like that position is one that has really caused a lot of injury for many types of musician. Um, so I, I veer just towards this this one. And then regarding the sort of tensing that happens when people are playing, um, a lot of that is because the thumb doesn't feel strong yet. And so instead, I have this exercise that I learned from a chiropractor where instead of getting this weak thumb joint, what you do is you pull down your thumbs like this. See the way I'm pulling it into its joint here. And that prevents thumb drift, which is something that happens to all of us as we age. The, see that look there? Instead, we want a really robust thumb because actually for heart playing, the thumb is the key to the hand, 
which is another topic to discuss. So, um, you know, with tendonitis, you know, treatment is totally crucial. Rest is totally crucial. Um, the very gentle warm up that I showed up here, and let me show you one more. Um, it's taken uh, from, I believe, a little bit from Tai Chi. And so very gently, you have your hands like this, you're going to roll them down, and then very gently like this. So this is veering a little bit towards that stretchy business, but we don't let it go very far. So just like that, very gently. And what we're trying to do is get the, the flow of energy coming straight through here. And my theory is that some of this constriction here is actually originating here. So tense shoulders. So again, by bypassing the shoulders, by engaging the back, the energy comes straight through your arm all the way to the fingertips. And you don't have this forced aspect of blocked energy anywhere. So again, this very gentle, which is also a beautiful exercise, again, for focusing. Like saying, I'm, I'm setting my space right now for practice. I'm starting to block out the recycling that's going by. Just so gently like this. It's very calming. Okay. So, um, here's a really fun support exercise. And when Madison mentioned about the cell phone usage, um, I actually hurt my shoulder, especially this one, last week by too much computer work. So, um, I have a fun little solution for you. This actually fixed it for me. So this is a scarf, uh, somewhat stretchy. I would say it's about eight feet long, probably. Um, no, it's probably nine, nine feet long. And um, I've seen people do this with the yoga strap as well. And so what you do is you put it over your shoulders, cross it in the back, Bring it around the front and tie it. So what this does is it reminds you to just let those shoulders not hunch over. So it's it's supporting them enough and not you know jacking them back like that. That's just you, we don't want that. But it's reminding me enough to not hunch. So this can be a really great um, reminder, for instance, when you want to be at your harp. It's, I feel like I'm pretty much in a perfect back position with this thing on. I wore it nonstop for three days um, because I knew it was the computer and I had to be on the computer. And just having this on made all the difference in the world. And I actually ordered a yoga strap as well, a natural colored yoga strap. Um, because I want to be able to wear it under my clothes. Um, I'm going to do a huge amount of traveling next month and I'm going to be on planes and I'm going to be in awkward positions and I just want to have that strap under my, um, under my clothes to give me some support. And I got it with a plastic buckle so that I won't uh, have to deal with the um, sensors and everything uh, as you go through airport security. Um, so this is wonderful. I've also seen people uh, use a pair of tights to, to make, this, make this situation, and it's so cool. So um, Kelly is saying, I'm a beginner. How long should I practice each day? Well, you know, um, you, we can only practice in short bursts at first, I would say. Um, so I think if you're a beginner, it's wonderful to practice in say 10 minute increments. Most of us can really only concentrate uh, for 20 minutes anyway. So by doing these short increments, maybe two, three, 10 minute sessions a day is fabulous. Uh, taking one day off is critical for memory, believe it or not. Um, but beyond talking about numbers, what you wanna do is just feel you've made some kind of progress. So um, I, know, I know that we like to quantify things with numbers and so on, and, and you may try that at first, but Kelly, I would say have a little bit of an intention 
each time you come to practice. I want to make this sound, song sound a little bit more fluid. I want to learn a little bit more about closing my hands. I want to learn a little bit more about crossing over. If you're a beginner, you probably don't do much of that yet. Um, so uh, that's what I recommend right now. Um, short bursts often and um, always really looking for a little bit of an improvement, a little bit of um, by setting an intention. And that way you feel motivated, right? Because when you see progress, it's possible to practice without um, an intention and not really be present and not make any progress, which feels horrible. Uh, so definitely set yourself an intention there, Kelly. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so Amy is asking, do you have a smaller harp that uses a lap bar? Could you please demonstrate the proper posture for smaller harps? I wish I could. I have two smaller harps. One is currently in, on the island of Cyprus. <laughs> Someone's borrowing it. And a student really recently took my other one to um, Ireland. And so she's going to return it to me soon. So I don't have my small harps with me. But I will show you another time. Um, I don't personally like the lap bar, but another of my students adores the lap bar. So I think... Um, experimenting is key because what works for me is not necessarily what works for you I generally um, will have the strap very loosely around me just as a guidance and I cross my feet at the ankle and I have the harp in between there but you know what I'll do a different tutorial on that um, I do try to keep a straight back nonetheless the principles we're talking about today are identical um, because it's never a good idea to have your back twisted uh, for any extended period of time. So, so yeah, I will, uh, once I get my heart back, my, um, and I'm gonna take it on my travels actually, so hopefully I'll make a, uh, I'll make a video, maybe from Argentina, which is one of the places, um, with my small heart. Let's see. Gloria, let me see your question. I have a tendency to lean my right arm too much against the soundboard. How can I keep this in check? Well, it's going to have to be raising the elbow. You know, um, if you're leaning your arm against the soundboard, that just that's a big precursor to tendonitis um, because you're cutting off the circulation and the energy is not coming through. So. And the only way to counteract that is to start raising your elbow. Um, so actually do this with me, everybody. Uh, put your arms out in front of you, with your back engaged, of course. And now imagine that you're drawing a bow and arrow or something like that back. Notice what, what your elbow is naturally doing. You're not going like that, right? And yet we will play the harp like that sometimes. So. It's all about what I call the tabletop arm, which uh, I'll make another video on, uh, since, uh, since we're, we're all about the back today, but that's a fabulous question. So yeah, uh, Gloria, um, have that elbow up there. Yeah, you're welcome, Helen. Helen. So uh, Bonnie says, I have been playing less than a year. I'm very dedicated to getting better, yay. And I know the beginner songs are less complex for good reason, but how good does one have to be before the harp really starts to sound like a harp with arpeggios and glissandos, etc.? Well, I um, I would love other people to jump in on this one because I think the harp does not need to sound uh, full of notes to sound incredibly beautiful. Um, I think playing one note with presence can be magical. You know, what if one note in the left, one in the right? How about a little pattern? So much is already there. So I would, I would rethink the idea that the simpler songs are not valid music or are not incredibly beautiful or that more is more. Uh, oftentimes on the harp, less is more. Uh, so I'd really enjoy this period right now, actually, because, um, you know, it's a special time. You're only going to be a beginner once, Bonnie. So I think rather than rushing, as many adults tend to, uh, into, 
I want to be better, I want to be better. What about just staying, staying with your harp and just listening to the beautiful magical sounds that it makes. There's so much there to enjoy. So that would be my, my two cents on your question. <laughs> Hey there! <laughs> Thank you, Albena. Uh, Albena is talking to about a, uh, a beautiful Bulgarian custom of of creating these red and white uh, sort of yarn things that are uh, heralding the coming of spring. And uh, actually, I got I got one all the way from Bulgaria this year, and so Albena saw it. <laughs> Bulgaria is a kind of my spiritual home. It was Bulgarian music that uh, inspired me to learn the harp. It made me hear harp in a different way. It was a Bulgarian women's vocal group uh, being accompanied by harp. And although I'd heard the harp before, I'd never heard it with that style of music. And I was like, oh man, yeah, yeah, tons of hearts, right? Isn't that music incredible? I just love, love, love it. And you know, Albina, the, um, the mystery girls are coming to Grace Cathedral. Uh, on the 26th of April in San Francisco, and I'm definitely going to be there. I'm going to cry the entire time. I'm considering wearing no makeup because, <laughs> because I'm just going to look so crazy. Uh, so yeah, the mystery girls, uh, Les Voix, Mysterieuse de Bulgare, they are that amazing group um, that really uh, opened the world to the sound of Bulgarian women's vocal music. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, guys, check everything out on YouTube that you can. When it comes to Bulgarian vocal women's music, my God, so glorious. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, what else do I want to say? Ah, yes. So um, where do the abs play into all of this? Uh, the abs are certainly involved. I mean, we are playing from our core in certain ways, but I would say they're much more relaxed than the back. The back is engaged. Now the back isn't, you know, really straining in any way. It's not exerting itself in maximum force, but it's absolutely engaged uh, in a way that the abs aren't. And also when we're playing, we want to make sure that we're breathing. So we don't really want to, you know, crunch the abs. Nonetheless, um, I do recommend in terms of cross training, uh, having strong abs because they, it does support your whole system. And um, you know, with that in mind, I really recommend yoga. I am a huge yoga fan. Another great way to not only get in touch with your body and build up your strength, also building up your musicality is belly dance. Belly dance is one of the most amazing things you can do for your harping. Um, tango, that's also fabulous because tango stance is identical to um, the best, in my opinion, stance for approaching your harp. And that's what really, made, really brought to bear the idea for me that you, you basically dance with your harp. You meet it, and you respond, you play with it, literally. The same way that we do with, um, uh, the same way that we do with tango, you know? Just exactly this, I mean, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, because I'm gonna go to Argentina for a couple of weeks, take tango every single day. Um, when I think about what most influenced me musically, it was definitely my piano teacher, Roy, huge. It was my harp teacher, Alice. And then it was tango, believe it or not. That taught me so many things about the elasticity of the beat, about how to really follow, um, how to listen in a very physical way, because the harp is a very physical instrument, you know? Um, so by doing these other activities, for instance, yoga, tango, belly dance, you get all the benefits of those things just as they are, but it also really helps your harping. Um, really increases your consciousness of your body. And for Virtual Harp Summit 2, one of the main messages that we got from people was, wow, I now see that technique is a holistic thing. It involves my entire body. And there was much more sense of, uh, bye Albina, thank you, yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you there, cool. Um, 
much more sense of how they feel at the heart and also being more picky regarding how much they were allowing any kind of pain or discomfort to happen. They were like, no, zero tolerance policy going on. So um, yeah, having this consciousness of our bodies is, is critical for our, for our technique. Um, and so then, you know, after you're done practicing, a, a little bit of release perhaps could be in order because no matter what, we're concentrating and we probably will build up a little bit of tension. Um, so a couple of release exercises are hands just behind the back. And just ever so slightly pulling down on them. You can try that here now. Just giving the back a little bit of a release there. Also just letting the shoulders get a little bit of a stretch, healthy stretch, perhaps a little bit of neck. You can also put your hands behind your head and kind of let your, kind of a belly dance roll, let your, your stomach start rolling out. It's just letting that back kind of go like a snake. If you're sitting on a chair, um, which I'm not, you can actually do that and then go back over the chair a little bit, if it's a stable chair. Um, one of my very favorites is to actually use a yoga block. Two of them, I wonder if I can show it here. Let's see, how much can you see? So I get two yoga blocks. <laughs> and I put one like this. I think you can see it, I'm on like that. And then I just lie down. Oh my gosh. Feels so good. <laughs> yeah, all this is just opening up. I had a yoga teacher call this the counter pose for life. You can actually just stay in this in a while, for a while. So, um, only do that one, you know, if you feel really comfortable with it. Uh, if, you're, if you're used to getting down on the ground and doing that kind of thing, um, which again, by going to yoga class, you'll get to build up to that in a very safe way. Uh, so this is really a fun exercise, and I think you could see it. I think so. <laughs> okay, so that's everything I wanted to talk about with you today uh, regarding the back. There's more to say, but I think these um, are the critical aspects that, um, that I feel are essential no matter what, and they work for all harping, no matter what type of harp you play, whether it's wire, lever, pedal, lap, all the same. And just to give a quick summary for you, um, the shoulder blades in and down, and that's what it looks like, very subtle. So here I am kind of a little bit sloppy and then in, down, that's it. I just I actually feel a lot more confidence when I do that. And we had talked about that regarding uh, performance. Um, and from there, we have the idea of the, the wings then get to rise up and that you're playing, your arms are very, very free, just like the wings, right? The idea that the birds aren't, you know, forcing their wings to move the way that we can force our hands to do, they don't go there, they use their backs, and so do we, when we play the harp. Then regarding um, the warming up, we have this nice little, you can just take them at your own time. These serve double duty because they are setting the stage for your practice, getting you into the right mind frame, kind of clearing space from the rest of your day, sort of say, Setting a sacred space, really. <sighs> a little, little bit of gentle twisting. Gentle, gentle, there's no forcing. We're just waking up the back, really. And then we can do a little bit of a chest opener. Using our harps, just very gently. And then when we're sitting, we want our flat edge chair. We want the harp to line up at the same angle, flat. We sit square. 
the heart comes straight back to us and we look straight down the heart just like that um regarding how we can get feedback uh mirror full-length mirror use your phone make a video and take a look at it um and if you're not sure what your benchmark is what you're looking for a uh, teacher I'm going to a teacher who has a really good handle on on technique in particular um then we did the scarf trick remember that one the fashion statement <laughs> So very simple, around here, back, cross, that's it. And honestly, uh, you can use this for just daily life. As I mentioned, I had used this because I'd overdone it on the computer and it really, really helped. Yoga strap works well. As, and then um, we just talked about the support activities, belly dance, yoga, tango. And as promised, let me review, the Dyna band with you. So this is a stretchy thing. And you want it in very low level stretch, not a, not a tight one. This is to help build up your muscle strength. So I wrap it around this table leg, and here it is. And then just gently, I pull it a little bit. Can you see how little I'm pulling it? I'm not trying to like really... <laughs> I'm not trying to be at the gym with it. Just slightly, here I am, ever so slightly. Just waking up and giving a little bit of strength. And you may find that pulling it this way is the best for you right now. Um, and over time you may pull out your elbows just a little bit, then over time a little bit more. Now, be careful with this. Be careful with this, this is a lot more strain and force. So just gentle, very slight movements. Because the fact is when we play, we are going to raise our elbows, especially on the right hand, this high. So we want the back to be able to support that. And that's what increasing the elbow angle, which uh, Gloria brought up, uh, that's what that does. So the Dynaband, yeah, very uh, easy to get online and you want to select the very gentlest um, stretch and it, you know it weighs nothing it's great you can even travel with this thing so that's what I have for you today for the back um, I hope you enjoyed it um, and if you have any last questions I'll be here for a couple more seconds uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing this video with other harpists I'd love to get the word out about about the back. I feel like this really should be common knowledge for all harpists so that they can really enjoy playing um, healthy for their, their whole life. And many of the principles I talked about actually, uh, they work for anything that we're doing, whether it's, you know, sitting in a chair, working on our computers, um, this back engagement uh, is key. So, um, so yeah, if you would uh, share that would be wonderful. Yay. Thank you, everybody. And um, I look forward to next time. Oh, Kelly asks, what kind of stool are you sitting on? Just a very basic, um, this kind of adjustable stool. That's it. Now, um, some people like to put a wedge on their stool. It's a well-loved wedge, as you can see. There it is, yeah. And this is so that their hips are slightly higher than their knees. This is a subtle point. For me, I don't like this, actually. Um, I think this is good for sitting in general. Um, but for playing the harp, I find this is really It's encouraging me to actually go a little bit like that. For me personally, now I do know other harpists who like this wedge, um, and I have it, you know, just because it is a harpy thing. It's a known thing. So, you know, you, you could consider using this. I do prefer completely flat myself, but I'm not against the wedge at all. I just find it's, it's making me kind of roll a little bit too much. Yeah, so, 
that's it for today. Thank you for being with me here and uh, I look forward to next time. If you want to write some topics in the comments below about what you'd like me to talk about next, uh, I'd love to hear from you because I want it to, um, to be something that's really relevant for you and something that really will, will help your harping on, on a regular basis. So, oh, thank you for all the hearts and likes, guys. I love it. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye for now.